Would you like to know why most cloud architectures fail and what you can do to be successful in your cloud architecture practice? If so, this video is for you. Hi, I'm Michael Gibbs, and I'm the founder and CEO of Go Cloud Careers, and I've been an IT architect now for over 25 years a network architect, a cloud architect, an enterprise architect, a business architect, and I've loved all these architecture roles. In all the years of my architecture practice, I'm gonna tell you, most technology projects fail and most cloud architectures fail. And it's really sad because when cloud computing is done right, it can provide an incredible competitive advantage for the client. But most of the time, cloud architectures fail, and they typically fail miserably. Roughly 30 to 50% of cloud architectures are actually a success, which means 50 to 70% of all cloud architectures are a total failure. There was a recent article in CIO Magazine that discussed most cloud architectures being failures. McKinsey estimates that 70% of technology projects are complete failures. So why are they failures? That's what we're gonna talk about in this video so you know how to make sure your architectures are more successful. The first problem in most cloud architectures is bias. Architects need to be trusted advisor. A true trusted advisor has no initiatives or no preferences for vendors or any particular technology. Yet we live in a world where a lot of people have their bias. The I love serverless people or the I love microservices people or the cloud native people. Now, the reality is when we have a bias, we become like a hammer in search of a nail. But for architects to be successful and to really help our clients, we cannot afford to have any bias other than making our clients successful. And we must have the business in our mind, the business's goals, the business initiatives, and the requirements right to drive the technology, not the technology to drive the business. Sadly, vendor certifications also create bias. If you take 10 AWS certifications, you're likely going to be biased towards AWS. 10 Google certifications, you're going to be likely biased towards Google. Imagine if a physician went to Pfizer certification and got to be taught all about the Pfizer medications. The physicians would be biased towards Pfizer drugs and potentially not think about all the other wonderful medications they could use to help their patients become better. And clearly that's unacceptable for the physician and the reality is it's unacceptable for the technology professional to have any bias. Again, the only bias that's acceptable is making your client successful. The next reason most cloud architectures fail is poor architecture practices. Many organizations try to engineer their architecture as opposed to architecting the architecture. And what do engineers do? They focus on the technology and building the technology because that is their job and they're great at it and we're very thankful to have great engineers. But the problem is when we put technology into a business, it's going to have a profound impact on the business. It's going to change the way people work. It's going to change the everything, even if it's just technology. I'll give you an example from healthcare. About 15, 20 years ago, all of healthcare ran on paper records. And there were approximately 98,000 people that died every year in the United States on these paper records. And, and honestly, medical errors were the fifth leading cause of death. The U.S. government was well-meaning and it said, everyone, we'll give you money to adopt electronic health records and we'll basically fine you if you don't. So out of nowhere, every doctor's office, every hospital adopted this new technology. Now, medical errors went from the fifth leading cause of death when we operated on paper to the third leading cause of death with this new technology and medical errors went up 250%. So that's a big mistake. Now, it's not that the technology was bad, it was that the technology in some cases didn't map to the way the physicians and nurses needed to work. So it forced them to work in a different manner, which was no longer good for healthcare and its patients. So architects can't focus on the technology, they must focus on the people the processes and the technology, but not the technology itself. Remember, we're not engineers. If the architecture does not focus on the people and the way the people operate, the architecture will most likely fail like most do. Now, what is exactly is an architecture failure? It's not when the technology doesn't work. It's when an organization spends millions or billions of dollars on technology 
and derives no business benefit from it or actually gets harmed because it either takes resources away from the business or actually negatively impacts the way the business operates. So let's discuss good architecture processes so that you can actually develop architectures that work. A good architecture starts with the executive, where we architects learn the organization's vision and goals for now, five years from now, 10 years from now, and even 20 years from now, so our architecture can support it. A good architecture starts with our cloud architects or our enterprise architects learning the business processes or how that business actually operates. A good architecture has the architect speaking with all the key stakeholders, whether they be department heads, the C-suite, or other people in the organization that have a stake in the organization's success. A good architecture has the architects redesigning the business processes with the help of the key stakeholders to operate more efficiently for the future. And then a great architecture will have the cloud architects or enterprise architects bringing in a team to examine the organization's current technology and then determining what kind of new technology platforms will be necessary to drive the innovation and the digital transformation that organization desires based upon their vision. Now, architects should then build a good team to design the architecture and a good architecture practice. The architects are going to determine the organization's readiness for change and capabilities to handle, build, and even support the new architecture. And at this point, a good architect, when they figure that out, will share that architecture, get feedback from key stakeholders. The architects will then get a build the business case, get funding for the architecture, create a statement work. Then the architects will create a governance structure for the project. And the architects will even create a program to adjust changes when needed, like good change management. So that's the difference between trying to think about the tech first versus trying to think about the business first. Now, when I discuss good architecture practices, you may notice something. Almost everything that I described, except for the design of the architecture, is non-technical. The reality is that the non-technical components of the architect's role, whether it be a cloud architect or an enterprise architect or an AI architect, are the majority of the role. This is what drives the digital transformation, understanding the business and applying technology to provide business enhancement. And everything we discussed here is not covered in any certifications. Not in an AWS Solutions Architect Professional, not in an Azure Solutions Architect Expert, not in a Google Professional Cloud Architect, none of them. So, most certifications focus on construction, and that's okay. It's okay for engineers to get certified to learn how to build, and it's fine for us architects to get those certifications, but we must develop the right skills to help our clients be successful. So, if you want to make sure your clients are successful, learn these skills. Obviously, we teach them in our Cloud Architect, Enterprise Architect, and AI Architect programs, but if you're not with us, please learn these skills. You need to have business acumen or business knowledge because our role is to optimize business, and if we architects don't understand business, we can't help the business. We need good, strong leadership skills to build our architecture teams, manage stakeholders, manage vendors, etc. We need what's called CXO relevance because we're going to need to communicate with the C-suite, understand the C-suite's needs, and be able to make sure that they take us seriously. We will need to have a level of executive presence so the client takes us seriously, we can command the room, and we can do what we need to. We will need to have good stakeholder management skills because we're gonna be managing various stakeholders throughout the organization. Great vendor management skills because no architecture is gonna be simply a single vendor. They're gonna be complex systems, potentially with tens or hundreds of vendors as part of our architecture. We'll have to have great presentation skills because as architects, we're going to be constantly presenting and communicating our ideas, and we're going to have to be negotiating with vendors, with stakeholders. All the time, we will constantly be negotiating. And without these skills, all we can do is design the tech. And if we design the tech outside of the context of the business, most likely, meaning 50 to 70% of the time, the architecture will fail. And we want you to be highly successful. So now you know why most architectures fail and what you can do to make sure your architectures are successful. If you desire to be a cloud architect or an enterprise architect or a generative AI architect, we've got webinars and free books to help you build your best career. The link for these webinars and free eBooks is in the description of this video. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to be notified of new videos to assist you in your IT architecture career. 
This is Mike Gibbs signing off for now. I hope to see you in another video or another webinar very soon. Thank you.